Hello! In this video we're going to learn about different vocabulary words that are essential in geometry. So the first vocabulary word is point. Now a point occupies no volume or space. It can be represented by a dot and a capital letter such as A, B, C, D, or E. Now note that it doesn't have to be just these five letters but a capital letter in the, I guess, in the alphabet. So we can have a dot and label that point and, or name it capital A. So we'd say that that's point A. Or we can have point B or we can have point C. So these are all different examples of points. The second vocabulary word is a line. Now a line can be defined by two points it passes through. So if we look at that definition, two points where a line passes through. So we have our first point, our second point, and then our quick line that was drawn. And these two arrowheads indicate that these line or this line is going to pass through the points. So it's not going to stop at the point, it's going to go through it and beyond. So these arrowheads indicate that we're going to go further out to the left and further out to the right. So this is an example of a line. Next we have line segment. And so the definition of a line segment, it's actually part of a line and it has two endpoints. So for example, C and D would be the endpoint labels and it is written as C, D with a straight line over it with no arrowheads on top. So what this looks like if we have two endpoints, keyword points, on the ends labeled C and D, so here's our four, first point, here's our second point, there's C, there's D. Notice how the line does not go through the dot or the point and have, has arrowheads on the other sides or each side and we have each endpoint C and D so they stop right at the points that it intersects with. Next we have ray. A ray is a portion of a line that starts at a point and extends forever in a certain direction. So if we're going to identify or even create our own ray, we have our point and it's a line that starts at that point and extends in that opposite direction or a certain direction. So again, we talked about how the arrowheads indicate that this is actually going to go beyond this exact location. So if I wanted to, I could have just drawn all the way off screen where you can't even see it or just indicate with the arrowheads that it's going to go on forever. Okay? And we can actually label that point P. So this would be ray P. The next vocabulary word we have is plane. So a plane is a two-dimensional figure that continues forever and can be defined by listing any three points on it which are not on a line. So you can have a plane as long as you know that there are three points in space. So if we have our plane which is I want you to look at this as a three-dimensional uh, surface like a wall or a, a, the floor if you're looking at it on an angle. Now these walls it doesn't stop it's not just a uh, parallelogram or what looks like a parallelogram it's just to represent a space or a flat surface so these ends can actually go on forever okay now this can be defined as a plane as long as we have three points on it that are not on a line these aren't lines again this is just indicating that they're extending beyond this space right here so if I have a line on the surface or on the plane okay three points. We have 1, Q, 1, R, and 1, S. So the fact that we know that there are three points in this space, we can say that there is a plane around it. Okay? So that's what a plane is. It's just think about like the walls, the ceilings, the, the floor of your room. Um, those are all examples of planes. Next we have angle. And I know that you guys have a little space provided to actually draw one out, so kind of draw it in this or to the right of it or if you have space in your margins go ahead and do that there um, but an angle it are two rays or formed by two rays that has the same 
endpoint called the vertex. So let's draw that. So here's our point, okay, or our endpoint, and there are two rays that are coming out of it. So we know that a ray is a line that starts from a point and goes uh, forever, goes on forever in a certain direction. So here's our point, here's our one ray, and then so since an angle is formed by two rays, from the same endpoint, we have to draw another ray. Okay, so this point right here is called the vertex, not an endpoint anymore. So the fact that we have one line going from one point and this and a different line starting from the same point, that's called the vertex. So highlighting our vertex right there, and there we go. So how do we name angles? So first we actually can call the angle by its vertex. So let's draw an angle so we have our vertex and then we have our two rays. So then if we have to name the angle or identify the angle out loud to somebody or if you're describing what specific angle you're talking about you can call it by its vertex. So if we know that the vertex has a label M or a name of it we can call this angle M and this is how we write or identify an angle that you see on paper, angle M. So you draw an angle and you write down the letter of the vertex that you are speaking of. Now, there are another way to actually name angles is using the three points with the vertex in the middle. So right now, there are no points on these rays. So let's put one here, label it N, and put another one on the other ray and label that C. So another way to name angles is using the three points with the vertex in the middle. So one way to identify this angle would be angle N, M, C. So notice how the M is in the middle of our angle name. You must include that angle in front so that you know that you're talking and we know that we're talking about an angle. Now the other way, other way is to label the or name the angle with going the opposite direction. So instead of NMC, we can go C, M, N. So angle C, M, and N. Now, there are different types of angles in geometry. So there's an angle where the actual angle measure is greater than 0 degrees and less than 90 degrees. So we're talking about like angle measures that are like 1 degree, 2 degrees, 3 degrees, 20 degrees, 50 degrees, 80 degrees, 89 degrees. But it's always less than 90 and always greater than 80, or I'm sorry, 0. Those are called acute angles. So different acute angles can be, let's say, it looks like this, I guess. And we can say that that's 67 degrees because that's between 0 and 90, that's 35 degrees, and that's 45 degrees. Okay. Another type of angle in geometry is between 90 degrees and 180. So it's greater than 90 and less than 180. Those are called obtuse angles. Okay. So those are a little bigger and wider. They open up a little wider than the acute. So they look like this, essentially. And these measurements could be 200. That's false. That could be, let's go with, uh, sorry, 150 would work, not the other one. Let's delete that. OK, so it could be 150 degrees. This could be 91 degrees or 135 degrees. Okay, so those are all measurements that are between 180 and 90. Sorry, I don't know why they put 200 there. Um, and then sometimes there are angles that are exactly 180 degrees. And what, these angles are actually called straight angles. And what they look like is a straight line. And if you were to measure with your protractor the measurement of that angle, that's 180 degrees. So then finally, an angle measurement that is exactly 90 degrees, we call a right angle. And what that looks like is essentially an L, a perfect L. And in geometry, how we know without it saying with a 9 and a 0 that it's 90 degrees, we actually use a box to indicate that it is 90 degrees. And we can identify that as a right angle.